Hi, my name is Matthew Nickens, and welcome to the Red Line Sports Report. Finish on three! Finish on three, finish! Bringing you the best down-home Italian cooking, Mama Lucia offers a variety of fresh salads, made-to-order pizzas, and savory Italian dishes to go with our large selection of wines. Visit any of our eight locations and have Mama cater your next event. With over 150 student athletes committed to more than 80 colleges and universities, Real Athletics will help you get noticed and get recruited by offering multiple production and recruiting services that will maximize your options. Get the exposure you deserve and sign with the school of your choice. Call us now. Hi, my name is Matthew Nickens. Welcome to the Red Line Sports Report. Today we're going to have a great show. We're going to sit down and have an in-depth conversation with BCC Baseball, and uh, then we'll do a little player versus coach trivia segment uh, following that. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Now the leading sports facility in Montgomery County, with fully retractable nets, top-of-the-line turf, five cages, and three pitching lanes. Round Trip Sports in Gaithersburg features a staff of current and former professional athletes. Check out roundtripsports.com for details on training programs, in addition to facility rental and membership rates. Welcome to the Red Line Sports Report. I'm sitting here with BCC baseball team and uh, Coach John Schmidt. Coach, um, what uh, what kind of season or what did this season mean to you guys, uh, especially you, uh, and just the I guess the history that was behind it? Yeah, I mean, this was a huge season for us. Uh, Sixteen and four. Uh, that's the most wins we've had since well, definitely since I've been here. This is my fourth year here. And uh, I know in the history of the school, I think it's definitely one of the best seasons probably ever. Um, but, you know, it meant a lot to us because going in, we didn't have a lot of expectations. A lot of people were counting us out. We lost a lot of guys. But, uh, you know, we came together as a team. This is the best team we've had, like true team, one through 25 guys we had in the playoffs. So everybody had a role. Everybody played a different role. And, and they did it well. Uh, you know, like I said, it, it's, a, it's a credit to these guys. You know, as coaches, you can only really – 
tell them what to do. You know, you can give suggestions, but they get, they're the ones that have to do it on the field. And that's really a testament to these guys. Hey, you mentioned uh, that maybe that weren't have, you didn't have such high expectations or, or others didn't. But what, what, what made this team special and able to come through and, and put together this type of year? Well, I, think they, I think they heard a lot of people say they weren't going to do anything or that they were going to finish 500. And, you know, well, you lost, you know, a ton of guys last year. And really, uh, they took that to heart. Uh, you know, a couple guys came up to me and says, hey, coach, how about us now? You know, we're not an average team. Matt Bacon right there <laughs> said that to me. Uh, we're not an average team, and uh, and he's right. We're not. We were a great team this year, and uh, 16 and four is you know that's something to be real proud of. And uh, back to back 4A South champions, that's pretty good. We went undefeated in the division this year. You know against Whitman and Churchill and Wooten. I mean those are those are some tough teams, and it's you know it's real good that you know we can finally mention BCC as one of those top teams now. Yeah. Um. Looking at since you've been at BCC, uh, a 50 and 29 record, uh, how or has your age, being relatively young, um, contributed and helped in I guess maybe connecting with the with the players? It's definitely helped. Um, you know, we have seven guys on the coaching staff. Uh, my JV coach Dave Joseph was there before I was, so he had a good feel for the, the community, uh, where the team was, where we needed to go, and. Uh, most of the guys on my staff played college baseball. Um, so we've been to, you know, not the highest level, not professionally, but we've played college baseball on, you know, any level. And really that's, you know, that's what we're trying to emphasize to our guys. You know, even if you don't play college ball, just make sure you put in 110% on the field. And, you know, I think our staff does a good job. You know, between, we've got five, uh, four or five guys on varsity, two or three on JV helping out at once. And that definitely helps, you know, get the message across that we're a program mm -hmm. and to give everything and to leave everything on the field. Awesome, quote unquote, one of if not the best outfielders in the county. Um, what uh, or how how does your speed affect you know what you're able to do? A on the base paths, but then also in terms of uh, covering the outfield. Um, well, I've gotten some good coaching. First of all, um, the speed the speed definitely helps. Uh, but I've gotten some great coaching uh, since I've been here. I've definitely definitely improved uh, my three years I've been on varsity. Um, but I don't know, just working a lot at, you know, getting good jumps, um, you know, tracking the ball, just stuff like that, and then the speed, able to you know, close down on balls. Um, so, yeah. But the coaching, I think, is the main, the main point that's really uh, helped me out. And then, um, you know, being one of the captains on the team, uh, you know, what did putting together this type of season, you know, mean to you? Um, I think that at the beginning, the me and the other captains uh, just felt like everyone was more. When everyone needed to be more involved, and everyone was more. De everyone needed to be more dedicated, and I think that started with uh, our off-season workouts that we did. Um, but everyone was really into it. Everyone was, you know, everyone was was one group. There it wasn't a bunch of individuals. It was one group uh, working together, and uh, I think everyone, not just the captains, everyone really came together and had that idea. So I, it was special. Okay, uh, Sam, first field. All right, Sam, um, you know, I saw a little bit of what you did this year uh, and also understand that you came over from St. John's. Um, right. How, uh, uh, coming from a program like that uh, to BCC, which, you know, Coach mentioned earlier that the whole idea is to build a program there, um, but, you know, what kind of played into that, and um, what were your, I guess, thoughts going into the season, not knowing, you know, perhaps all the guys on the team? Uh, I was a little nervous at first to meet all the guys because I'm a lot more comfortable playing with a group of guys that are friendly and, uh, like, willing to help each other be the best. <laughs> and these guys, way more than St. John's, want you to be the best that you are, and they want the team to do the best. So these guys, hands down, awesome. Loved it. And I guess since I have you right now, what are your, uh, what are your expectations for next year? Next and year we're winning it. That's for that sure. <laughs> Kyle, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing all right. Um, you know, a sophomore and then coming up or, or – Filling in mid-season, you know, one of the, 
uh, leadership positions on the field. Um, you know, what, how did you take it? You know, were you able to take it in stride? Uh, were there any difficulties in, in being able to do that with and working with the, with the older guys on the team? Yeah, I was, I was really amazed at how big a step up varsity is from JV. Just everyone, everything moves so much faster and everyone throws the ball so much harder. So, it, I mean, it was a big adjustment, but I, I did pretty well towards the second half of the season. So it was really fun, yeah. What about the what about the playoff experience? Yeah, that was great. I mean, I've never been that game against Churchill. I've never been in uh, in a baseball game that intense before. I mean, just plays going on all the time. It was, but it was. I mean, it's a great experience. It really builds your character, makes you feel much more sure of yourself on on the baseball field for the future. All right, Croft. You know, another sophomore on the team. Um, I was just looking over the stats. So you're, you know, second. Uh, with innings pitched, um, another leadership position. You know, I mean, being on the mound by yourself, uh, being able to do that says a lot. Um, what, uh, you know, what, what's your mentality when you take the mound, and um, you know, how do you uh, how do you stay focused uh, when you're out there? You know, more or less, you're surrounded, but out there by yourself doing it. Um, well, I just try to focus on one thing. I don't try to focus on my surroundings or anything. I just try to stay locked in as I can and just focus on the batter and the game. That's right. I mean, it has to step up from varsity, but, you know, I feel like I've worked hard to get here, so uh, I can just focus on one thing and, you know, that's it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Andrew. Um, I know you were doing it in the batter's box this year. Uh, you're, you know, you're stroking the ball. Um, what, uh, what's going through your mind What's your thought process as you enter the batter's box? Uh, well, for me, uh, I just try to I just try to stay back and look fastball. Uh, it's kind of that's kind of like my I just like staying back, hitting the fastball. I got quick hands, so I can trust myself and just explode. You know, with the success you guys had uh, this season, what's your summer regimen and schedule look like in terms of uh, in baseball? Uh, well, just playing a lot of showcases and going all over, just trying to get my name out there and also just improve for next year so we can go farther in playoffs, help out the team out. And then where is uh, where's Jamie? I know on a team like this, uh, leadership has a lot to do with it, um, especially attitude. I mean, baseball is a game, probably the only one where you can go three out of ten and be a success three out of ten times and, and be considered a Hall of Famer. Um, you know, with that in mind, you know, what, what, what did you do? What were you able to do just in terms of, uh, you know, being a part of such a successful team and, uh, and taking on that leadership role? Um, I think this year as a senior, that was a, that was a big part. Um, and it wasn't so much about leadership as it was setting an example. Um, and that started, I think, early for our team in uh, winter workouts. And that's something I think is unique to our team. Um, we, we start early and we work hard. And this year, um, we had a lot of seniors who really dedicated the year before, and the juniors saw that, at juniors and sophomores, and they, we had a large turnout. And it started there, and we showed that we were working hard, and we had plans to do well this season. And then when the season started, we also showed that same attitude, always working, always working towards the potential of being our best, and um, definitely staying focused on the field, more focused than years past, I'd say. Yeah. Um, how about Nick? I told him. How you doing? Hey, pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice. Um, Nick, again, uh, you know, you guys had a, a relatively, by any means, uh, successful season. Um, but obviously, along with it comes a lot of ups and downs, not just this year, you know, last year as well. Um, you know, how were you able to keep the guys focused and up, you know, when things aren't going well and, you know, staying just trying, you know, what's coming next? Yeah. Um, a big part of it was um, never, never giving up, always working towards the next game. And um, well, this season we lost to who did we lose to? Quinn Sorchwood. We lost to QO, and it was a really important game. And we lost by one in the bottom of the seventh. And we came back back um, the next day to play Poolsville, and no one thought we were going to win that game, but we came out and win it, mostly because of. Coach. You did get the game winning, game -winning, game -winning hit. <laughs> oh, true. 
<laughs> that too. <laughs> um, I guess if we could slide back down, slide back down to coach, actually. Um, talking to the guys, you know, everybody I think touched on off-season workouts, um, setting an example for the younger guys, um, a team-oriented, you know, or a family-oriented team. Uh, how how important is that all, you know, not just one but everything in terms of building a program, an actual program? Well, it's in my opinion, it is the most important thing is uh, the year-round work, uh, seeing the guys all the time. I mean, these guys you look behind me, I mean, you know, they're they're pretty much a family all year round, and that that starts in the fall when they're playing fall leagues. That starts in the winter time when they're lifting weights together, and uh, you know, having played college ball and coaching college ball, that's what we built at in the college level and the fact that these guys are doing it at the high school level that uh, tells you something right there that they're willing to you know make the commitment to make the sacrifice to you know hopefully see results on the field and not just grow as uh, you know as baseball players but as men you know mm -hmm. just you know hey it's we're coming together and you know that's our job as you know coaches me and myself and coach Joseph right here we're not only coaches we're educators and to tell you the truth, like I'll be happy to see all these guys, you know, when they graduate high school, some of them in a week or two, and uh, you know they all go on to be a success in whatever they do in college and uh, at the in, you know in the work field, whatever they choose to do, and that starts with uh, you know commitment, and these guys all have it, so it's pretty impressive. Um, before we go, Coach Joseph, um, obviously any program needs multiple tiers and steps and people, you know building up to it um you know what have you seen at the at the junior varsity level that could lead to any uh insight with what's going to happen over the next couple of years we've had a lot of success on the jv level and um we're seeing that translate to varsity now and hopefully you know the boys are prepared to be successful on the varsity level that's our uh, ultimate goal in jv baseball so things look good for the future. That's, I mean, yeah, you guys, it looks like you guys have it set up. Um, when we come back, uh, we're going to sit down, we're going to do some trivia, and this will be the first. It'll be players versus coaches. So we will see who the real teacher or mentor is when we come back. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Located in Bethesda, Maryland, Sports Extra has been a full-service equipment and uniform dealer since 1991. With custom screen printing and embroidery, Sports Extra is the place to go for your upcoming season. Visit us seven days a week and check out our 10% team discount year-round on all sporting goods and apparel. With over 150 student-athletes committed to more than 80 colleges and universities, Real Athletics will help you get noticed and get recruited by offering multiple production and recruiting services that will maximize your options. Get the exposure you deserve and sign with the school of your choice. Call us now. All right, welcome back to the Red Line Sports Report. Uh, my name is Matthew Nickens. I'm here with BCC Baseball, and this is the first ever players versus coaches. Um, Quick rules. Uh, I will read a question. The first team that yells out the right answer wins that question. If you guess the wrong answer, then your team's out for that question. The other team has 15 seconds to come up with the correct answer. Um, the first team that reaches six questions correct wins trivia. And um, and what was what was on the line? What was? Something that has to do with the banquet next Wednesday. <laughs> See you next. To, to be determined. To be determined, but it will happen. Washing my car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you're ready, let's get it started. Question number one, and speak up. Question number one, who is currently leading the AL in batting average? Miguel Cabrera. <laughs> That's why I have one zero coaches. <laughs> oh, did you guys have it? I didn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Speak up. Question number two. Name three of the seven dwarfs. Dopey. Drowsy. Dopey, Dopey drowsy, sleepy, sleepy, and Doc. They missed it. What was yours? Dopey. 
Don't be sleepy and duck. Correct. Drowsy is not a door. That's tough. I got a little sister, man. Well, uh. Saving kind of looks like one. The score count right now is 2 0, coaches. Question number three. Name the last Major League Baseball pitcher to pitch a perfect game. Matt Cain? Uh, incorrect. <laughs> Felix Hernandez? That's correct. <laughs> Three zero coaches. Right, we're resilient. Is this the first skunk in We're resilient. Three off resilient. <laughs> we come back. Oh, yeah. Bottom of the seven. Walk off, right? All right. Next question. What's the name of Jay Z and Beyonce's daughter? Blue Ivy. <laughs> come on, fellas. <laughs> Four zero coaches. What was it? Blue Ivy. Who named your child? <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge is powerful, God. It's yeah. Kiki, right? Uh, your teammates are quiet over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, next question. The score is 4 0. Who are Katy Perry, Rihanna, Barack Obama? Who has the most followers on Twitter? Rihanna. That's incorrect. Ooh. You need me to repeat it? We're going to go with Katy Perry. That's correct. You guys are on board with the Twitter question. <laughs> we wanted to let you guys get back to us. All right, the score's 4 1. The players are on the board. Next question What is Maryland State flower? Black Eyed Susan. <laughs> it's two, four, two. They are coming back. Flower child. Horticulturist. Next question. Scores four, two. Players are coming on. Next question. Paul Walker and Vin Diesel star in what movie coming out this weekend? Fast, Fast, Fast Furious. Furious. Six. Fast six. Oh, Coaches. Fast and Furious 6. I think it's just called Fast 6. I think it's just Fast, oh, it's fast and Furious 6. You gotta have the serious part, man. Five, oh, 5-2. Five All right, you guys, you guys are setting this up for a dramatic ending. That's how we like to do it. Argue with that one. Where is this? Try this. Next question. What city in Italy invented the modern pizza? Venice. Venice. Oh, shh. Well, you guys both got it incorrect. Uh, <laughs> We're at Mama Lucia's. You guys should get this one. What city? The answer was Naples. Napoli. All right, guys. Score is still 5 2, coaches. Next question. Name two members of the 3,000 hit 500 home run club. Name two. You only got to name two. Hank Aaron. Ted Williams. Incorrect. You guys, name two. Uh, name two members of the 3,000 hit 500 home run club. I know some coaches that'd be upset about that one. Hank Aaron, Willie Mays. Correct. Yes. You should have just said Mike Schmidt, right? I Schmidt. 5-3. Next question. Still with baseball. Next question. Cal Ripken Jr. won the AL MVP award in 1983 and in? 1991. Whoa, you guys are doing something funky on the banquet. Coach, you won. Let's go to 10. All right, all right. <laughs>
Make it interesting. Want to do one more question? Double or nothing. Double or nothing. Double. Let's go. Last question. Double or nothing. Yeah, I don't think. Zero zero. This is the last. All right. This is. I'm not doing push-ups. All right. This is. Twenty push-ups. Loser does twenty push-ups. Loser does twenty. All right. Last question. In what year did America sign the Paris Accords? Twenty twenty. 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 Twenty